have talked about V-codes in the past, and it still, you know, um, they are complex sometimes. And then if once you get it, once it clicks in your head, it's like, oh, okay, I, I got it. Uh, but every once in a while, they'll throw a zing or you'll, you'll experience something that you think, I'm not sure exactly what I need to do. All right, so this person said, I got confused when looking at V-codes. They're mixed in the index. Uh, what keywords will help me find the right V-code? And I think what they're saying is they're mixed in the index, whereas like E-codes have their own index. It's separated, but V-codes are in with the, the general codes. So uh, V-codes are reported to support services that are rendered when a patient does not have an acute medical condition. Okay, let's see. Do I have, I can't scroll. Lorraine will have to scroll for me. I bet she's typing to everybody. Okay, these are the basic uh, sections for V codes. So what I would encourage you to do if you struggle with V codes is one, uh, go to the section in your ICD manual that specifically talks about V codes. And that starts at like V01. Um, and read, just just peruse them and kind of get familiar with, with what options are out there. I divided these up. Exposure. If you're exposed to something, you've got to paint that picture for uh, the provider and for statistic purposes so that they can follow the treatment. The one I picked, because I thought that was unusual after we had it on, you know, um, here back when anthrax was going through the post office and stuff. So let's say you had a postal worker that had been exposed to anthrax. This is the code that you would use. And the way you look it up, is by that key term exposure and then you're going to go uh, to so exposure to to what anthrax and that gives you v01.81 so anytime somebody that is ex is exposed to something then you get to use a v code for exposure the next one is inoculation and vaccinations i i don't um I don't know that there's a difference. Now, you can correct me if you know the difference. If there's a difference between the term inoculation and vaccination, you know, we said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a vaccination, but they're saying, you know, I'm going to give you an inoculation. Uh, that'll be something you can Google and see what the difference is. But to look these up, you're going to look under the term vaccination. Now, there's different types, but let's say it's uh, prophylactic prophylactic meaning uh, you know you're you're doing it so you don't get something so a vaccination uh, to protect you from what and there's a whole list of different things that that you can protect uh, be protected from with the vaccination and so chickenpox I remember when that came out uh, you know because in the past we just, you know, you just took your kids to whoever's family had chicken pox in the neighborhood so they'd hurry up and get exposed and get it in their system and you wouldn't have to worry about it. But now there's actually a vaccination for it. And I remember out of the six children, the first one that got vaccinated for chicken pox uh, and supposedly they weren't supposed to get it. Or if they do, they get a less severe case is what I think I was told. And that is V. 05.4. So if your children, you know, you have children going in for well baby checks and, and seeing the pediatrician, you know, this is going to be something at a pediatrician's office that is going to be a very common code for you uh, for vaccinations and V05.4 for chicken pox. Now, another main term, and this one is overlooked frequently, and the, the reason I'm more familiar with it is with the HCC coding, um, status codes carry, a lot of status codes carry HCCs, and they want to be captured for those, uh, you know, chronic conditions uh, uh, for, for um, raising their score. And, uh, but they're overlooked because if you're coming in, to uh, you know, for a cold, and uh, the the patient has a uh, colostomy, the doctor's not really there to look at the col colostomy. However, if it's an HCC thing, then you're looking for anything that is a diagnosis related 
um, uh, eight, carries an HCC and uh, colostomy would. So uh, you always look under status and if you aren't familiar with the status codes, which I think we did a short segment on status codes in the past, you'd have to look that up in our replay club or check where maybe Boyd put that on YouTube on our um, membership area, but the term is status. So in your index, in your ICD, look up the term status. Now this one is post, so status after a colostomy. So this person's got a colostomy. It's V44.3. And there's other status codes like uh, there's other kinds of ostomies that a person can have, a urostomy and, and stuff, a tracheostomy. Uh, but Another status code is a status post um, below the knee amputation or above the knee amputation, which is BKA and the other one. Um, then the other things that you're going to um, see in status, let me see if I can think of a ventilator, status ventilator, and uh, people think, well, that might be someone that needs to be in a bed. You know, you think of the big ventilator system, but that's not true. There's actually ventilators. Well, of course, they people in a wheelchair, maybe you're quadriplegic, but um, uh, I saw a picture of a girl going to school at college and having her ventilator thing there. Anyway, it was very interesting. Okay, a big one that is the history codes. This is the probably the first one that I learned of the V codes was the history codes. And uh, it's divided up into two sections, your history codes. Now, you'll still look under your key term of history in your index. So you're going to look history, personal, or family. If you have a – which this one was blew my mind because um, I actually – when I found it, I didn't realize this code was in here because I've never had to use it. Uh, if you know, but hey, it's a pretty cool code. Uh, history, personal, death, and I thought, eh, okay, you're dead. How can you, you know, get a code? Uh, sudden, maybe they had a heart attack or something. Successfully resuscitated. I mean, how cool is that? So V one two point five three. That might not even be a code that you're aware of that can be used. And for statistical purposes, you can see how important it would be to capture this if this it occurred in a patient. So again, that's one I I wasn't even aware of. Or maybe I had known about it, but I've never had to actually use that code. Uh, but just going in and reading these history codes will teach you that they're there to so that you can use them. Now, a family history is again, you don't have the the condition, but someone in your family had the condition. So a fam a history uh, is your again key term family, and then epilepsy or you know types of cancer uh, maybe uh, cardiac conditions or uh, cerebral vascular conditions and stuff and you can see how important again not just to statistic uh, purposes but for your health if uh, like you have a family history of breast cancer you definitely want to make sure that's notated uh, because you know the doctor will want to monitor that uh, you may need to get a mammogram earlier than might have been recommended for other people and your insurance company says, well, I'm not going to pay for a mammogram for a 20-year-old, but if they have a family history of breast cancer, then it makes sense, doesn't it? All right, now another uh, key area that, that V codes are used is for screenings, any type of screenings. Now this gets a little confusing with screenings because sometimes you don't think about something being done for a screening. Again, go back, look in the index, look at screenings as your key term, and there's a big long list of different things that people are screened for. Uh, the one I picked uh, to show you was lead poisoning because, you know, if you've lived in a house that is of a certain age, uh, the paint is, um, you know, something that was concerned about. So in the windows and stuff where, where paint chips, if you live in an old house, they'll they'll ask you, pediatricians often will ask if, if the children are exposed to lead paint. And um, and again, you can get lead poisoning from, from that if a child eats, eats that or gets that on their hands. So again, if they're worried uh, about um, you know, lead poisoning, they would do a screening for lead poisoning, V8 
1.5. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, there's there's more. Um, it's not really an extensive list, but these are the main terms here that that for V codes. If you want to get savvy with your V codes, again, these are these are the main ones to look at. Uh, so observation. For observation. Uh, you're going to again look up the key term observation and then the one I picked was suspected concussion cerebral so you look up observation suspected concussion cer uh, cerebral so again they're just uh, they're coming back for a visit because they want to see you know do he got hit in the head playing football and we just want to make sure that he doesn't have a concussion and so that's why he's being seen today is for observation uh, to, to confirm whether he does or does not have that and that's a V7 1.6 big long list of different things that that can be done in the observation now aftercare and follow-up care these are they get confusing but if you know these these little definitions for aftercare that means that it's after the acute phase you're actively getting treatment for whatever it is that uh, you're coming in for the aftercare but it's no longer acute the example that I came up with was a fracture so again the key term is aftercare and let's say you know your uh, your patient uh, is coming in for aftercare because they had a fracture but it's healing okay but it's also a pathological fracture and location it's of the ankle that would be V54.29 okay so your key term is aftercare so it's no longer acute it's in the healing process so why are they coming in well they had a fracture and it's healing okay so you're going to keep indenting here to get this um, what type of a fracture was it besides healing well it was a pathological fracture meaning there was a disease process going on uh, maybe your patient is a you know 80 year old female with osteoporosis and our osteosclerosis and so their bones are more brittle and porous and so you know she stepped off of her step and bam her ankle snapped um, uh, so that would be a V54.29 unlike follow-up follow-up is different because the condition is healed okay so uh, when you look up in the index go under follow-up one of the ones that was unique and I remember a friend having this they had to go in for follow-ups for a little while uh, because they were taking a high-risk medication which is V67.51 and they were very concerned about his kidneys uh, because again he uh, and I can't I think it was a really bad infection that he got oh his his um, appendix burst and he had all kinds of complications so because of the medication the antibiotic that they put him in was so strong um, they were very concerned about it affecting his other organs so even after he everything was taken care of he had to go in for a period of time and follow up with um, some blood work just to to make sure that that medication which was high risk uh, had not caused damage and so again V67.51 uh, reflects that it's not an acute phase but he's still going for a follow-up now one that I've not used to seeing very much <clears throat> or don't think about too much and maybe you don't either might not even been aware there's a V code for this but is for donors and this this code is not maybe what you're thinking it's not used for when an organ is harvested or if you're doing self donation so you know if you know you've got to have a blood transfusion later in uh, because you're having a procedure done uh, then you go in and have them uh, store your blood for you for your procedure so they can give it back to you that's not included in this no instead this is if you're giving something you're donating um, to somebody else and it also is, does not include harvesting a, a, from a cadaver that doesn't count in this uh, V code area either a perfect example of this is um, bone marrow so when you go to do uh, 
to find this code, you're going to look under donor, and then if it was bone marrow, then it would uh, end, it would indent into bone. Now, people donate bone as well. Uh, <clears throat> Probably for a family member or something, you know, I don't think you're just going to go and let them shave off a piece of your hip for uh, just for no reason. But uh, the code for donor for bone is V59.3, but then it or two, and then it indents and it says donor bone and then marrow V59.3. And again, that is getting to be more and more popular uh, because just a little bit of maybe of your bone marrow that they would take, I think, usually out of the hip bone or the pelvis, you know, it could uh, be put into a person that has maybe uh, a type of leukemia or, or a cancer or something and they get a bone marrow transplant. But they, those all your numbers and stuff have to to connect. So you you see those websites and you see uh, people going in and being tested to see if they can donate their bone marrow to to a friend, and uh, so that would be the code that would be used. Now. Uh, the second to the last one is counseling. This is something uh, probably as a coder you see more often. Is uh, you know you need to to let them know if counseling is being done. And again. Keyword is counseling. This one, expectant parent, okay, for pediatric pre-adoption visit, uh, V65.11. There's all, all kinds of rules and regulations with adoption. And again, you know, the, it, counseling uh, needed to be done before you're allowed to adopt. Um, and this would be a code. I did not realize that they had a specific code for pre-adoption visits. And so when I, you know, the other ones for like dietary counseling and mental illness and abuse or like tobacco, you know, things like that, those, you know, you, you think about. But the, the V6 5.11, that was a new one for me. Um, never had an account, uh, occasion to use that. Uh, last one, routine and administrative exams. Now, I think probably these are the most, uh, I don't want to say they're the most common V codes. That's probably not a good thing to say because it really depends where you work um, uh, to say whether it's a common one. But I think a lot of people are aware of these, these V codes for the exams. Uh, one of them would be like routine. Now, it just so happens that if you look under routine, uh, there's only one code that you're going to find in the index under routine, and this is it. Routine postpartum follow-up, V24.2. And I think that's because um, it's so common it, that people think of it as being routine, but there's no other codes in your index listed under routine as a keyword. But another, uh, but there's like several, maybe two pages of several columns of ones for admission. And the way they divide that up is it's admission and then for, F O R, and then it indents into what are they, what's the admission for? An exam, okay. Well, what are they getting the exam for? For fitting, and I picked artificial eye because my grandfather had an artificial eye. I thought that was interesting. V five two point two for that. Uh, they had you know uh, prosthetics, you know, uh, for an artificial limb. Uh, again, you know, you if you're having trouble uh, finding a code, the the thing you need to do is be aware of what V codes allow you to tell in a story, uh, thanks statistical reasons as well, not just to get paid, but then divide up. These are your major categories. Um, go to that section in your uh, V codes. You know, now your index is going to be mixed in, like the person had said, but you can open up to the V codes and just kind of flip through them, and you're going to see these major categories and find the codes that you maybe weren't even aware of. If you do that, and I call that getting up uh, close and friendly with your manual, uh, it's going to be really, really interesting what you're going to find. And, uh, and, and again, I think you'll be surprised that some of the codes that are in there, you would have never thought that, that you could code for something like that. And it wouldn't be there if it wasn't needed. So uh, that's it for V code. This is one little section of V codes, but we've done other uh, slides on V codes in the past. Um, but this is 
this is one that was a really, really good question. There was a comment that also said the main term outcome of delivery also leads to V codes. Yes, that's right. Outcome of delivery. That's right. That's another big one. Get more CPC exam tips, coding certification training, and CEU credits. Go to www.codingcertification.org.